Hi guys! So as you can tell by my bare face and my fluffy sleeves, today's makeup transformation is inspired by Princess Jasmine from the Disney movie Aladdin. If you don't know what this movie is, you better go watch it after this video. She is a princess of Agrabah, this beautiful city in the desert. Her eyeliner is always on fleek and she has this pet tiger named Raja. So I thought I would make her very, very creepy. Inspired by her pet tiger, like what if it attacked her, what would happen then? Warning, this video is going to be super, super graphic and gory towards the end. Just a little FYI for you guys who are under 13 years old. But first, we're going to do this beauty makeup. It's going to be another two-in-one type of makeup video. So first thing, before we start the makeup, I'm going to put my head into this weird fishnet looking thing. It is a new type of wig cap. That's my absolute favorite because we're going to put our hair in a wig later, but I just want to get it out of my face. Put some bobby pins in it so it'll stay in place and not budge, hopefully. Then I'm going to use Urban Decay's primer potion around my eyes and a little bit on my nose to hopefully make my makeup not crease all over my face in those little crinkles and cracks. Then I'm getting one of my absolute favorite drugstore foundations. This is Revlon's Colorstay 24 Hour. I just want to look natural and pretty like these Disney princesses try to achieve goals that could never happen. But I am applying that on with this dense kabuki buffer brush. It's like my absolute favorite for liquid foundation. Buffering that all over my face, neck, and chest. If you have a airbrush kit system, I would use that instead because it's a lot easier and you will get less likely to get splotches if you know how to use an airbrush. Don't you just love applying makeup with your less dominant hand and you feel like you just can't do things in life correctly anymore? Now that our foundation is on, we're going to try to do that Kardashian-esque glow with the contour and the highlight that's a shade lighter than our actual skin tone and foundation is. I'm using this concealer from Poise. The Poise concealers are like heaven. One of the best brands of concealers I've ever used in my life. I love using these brushes that are used for shadows. You know those flat, fluffy ones? They're my favorite for concealer because concealer brushes are a little too stiff for my under eyes. Then doing that on the bridge of my nose and then some of my forehead. Then getting my NARS Creamy Concealer and covering some of my under eyes and blemishes and on the bridge of my nose again and a little bit on my forehead. Then blending that out with a beauty blender because it's really expensive but it's worth it. If you do not have a beauty blender, please use a disposable makeup sponge that is damp. Also, the beauty blender has to be damp. And once you have that Kardashian glow on your face, you're going to start doing contour. I am getting one of the lightest contours from that concealer palette. And just contour your face. I did it on my nose and my forehead and the sides of my cheeks, the hollows of them. Then I'm just going to powder my under eyes with Bare Minerals Hydrating Powder and the rest of my face with a translucent powder. And remember to pat the rest of your chest with some powder. And then with that contour, I'm going to get another contour shade. This is Benefits Hula Bronzer just to give my skin more of a sun-kissed glow but not to make my skin tone too, too, too dark. Just like I got a nice tan maybe. And on the hollows of your neck bone. I know that sounds really creepy but Princess Jasmine does a lot of low cut tops and she has a very prominent collarbone. So I'm like, why not accentuate that? Maybe it'll make us look skinny or sickly. I don't know, somewhere in between. Now it's time for highlighting. I am using this Hourglass Highlighting Palette. It is way too expensive. I would just use a golden tone shimmery eyeshadow. Then I'm gonna use one of my absolute favorite tart blushes for the Disney Princess looks. And now that that's done, it's time to put our eyebrows on fleek. I'm using NYX Brow Powder Duo. Has that light shade and the dark shade. I'm using the light shade first just to shape my eyebrows. You definitely want to use a reference picture for this to make it more arched and thicker than you normally do. And then I'm going to go in with the darker color from that duo and put that darker color more towards the center of the eyebrow shape and towards the tail end of it. Now that our eyebrows be looking on point, it is time to put on some more eyeshadow primer so that we can prime them lids and slap some makeup on it. I'm using the Morphe N35 Neutrals palette. This is my favorite. Going with the darker chocolatey reddish brown shade, really thick towards my lash line on the lower half of the eyelid. And then I'm gonna do a more neutral color eyeshadow brown on top of that, and then a very clean blending brush to blend them together. And then I'm getting a third brown color that's darker than the lighter brown, but lighter than the darkest brown towards the eyelash line. Does that make sense? And now it's time to put on some winked outliner. You could use gel, 
liquid. I'm using a NYX liquid duo. Whatever you feel comfortable with though. So just be very precise and careful with this. This is what I think she's mostly known for in contouring and just glowiness. She's like what the Kardashians wish they could be. Honestly though. Line my bottom waterline. If you are scared to put this near your eye, you don't have to do it. Now it's time to do those eyelashes. You're gonna first curl your eyelashes with the mirror in the way so you can't really see much because I need to be precise with this. I'm using these very thick fluttery lashes so they'll look flirtatious and cute. Now just getting a red lip liner. This one's from the drugstore, but you just want a red tint one all over your lips. You could extend your lip a little bit maybe, do whatever shape you want. And then I'm not gonna use one but two lipsticks. The first one being this Revlon Matte Color Stay Lip Crown. Then this absolute favorite dream lip color, which is Burt's Bees Redwood Forest. Oh, it's like this mahogany red that's so gorgeous because Jasmine's lips are more of a mahogany deep tone red that has slight tints of brownish in it. I know, weird. Now's my favorite part. We are done with the beauty portion of this makeup. I am going to dress up and get a gold choker necklace. Then this gorgeous, gorgeous wig. It's like what my hair wishes it could be like hair goals. In fact, if I could put seven million layers of weave in my hair, I would still dream of my hair looking like this. It wouldn't look close to it. Put these teal ribbons on it. I made this headband from things I found at Michael's in the craft store. Then I made these earrings out of necklaces. Since my ears aren't pierced anymore, I had to cut into pieces. I looped them around with fishing line. So like I said, this is the final beauty portion of the makeup look. If you want to go on further and it gets very, very creepy, keep watching because I'm going to transform her into if the tiger, Raja, her pet, scratched her and she transformed a little bit into half tiger, half princess Jasmine. It's going to be so amazing. I hope I have the beautiful glow of the princess of Arabian Nights. So to transform her, we have to take the wig and all the accessories off. You can leave the necklace on. But I'm just getting an eyeliner pencil to draw on claw marks of the tiger across her face. You want to make sure there's a huge chunk out of her skin near her eye because you want the eye to stand out because felines have very significant eyes that you want to see in this look and around her mouth. You could draw in the nose and the feline mouth part. And I'm doing more claws across the chest in the opposite direction of the ones from my face so that it looks like both hands attacked her. Of course, if you never use spear gum or nose and scar wax, you could totally skip these next steps and just paint it on with some professional looking or Halloween makeup paint. Girl, you could do whatever you want to do. And then you get some spear gum. I am using RCMA's Matte Adhesive. Same thing, a little bit fancier and works a lot better in my opinion. And putting that around the scratch marks that we did, Starting off with the first one, I'm gonna go from my forehead down to my chest. And then getting my favorite Ben Nye Nose and Scar Wax. Cause this blends so nicely into the skin. You get ones for different skin tones. Roll that into tubes and then use a cosmetic looking spatula or you can use a butter knife and just smooth the edges out. And do it along the lines of that spear gum matte adhesive. They kinda are shaped like worms but look like pieces of flesh which is really, really creepy, I'm sorry. Just keep working it around your face and do the other claw marks. Try not to get too much of this stuck in your eyebrows because if you don't know how to correctly take this off, you can rip your eyebrow hairs out. So don't put it on your eyebrows if you don't know what you're doing. It literally took me three years to learn how to use nose and scar wax correctly. You want to make these gash marks kind of look like Tony the Tiger from your favorite American cereal, Frosted Flakes. And if this is too hard and sticky, just remember to have a baby wipe on hand and some loose translucent powder to dip your hands and spatula in so that it won't stick to your hands and more on your face. And now that I look like a salsa dancer that's been in a very terrible accident with these puffy sleeves, we are going to get some flexible sealer. This one is by Krylon. With a disposable sponge, you don't want to use this stuff with your brushes or it will ruin it. And you don't want to use nose and scar wax without the sealer or it will melt off your face in seconds. And you don't want to get it in your eye. Waiting for that sealer to dry, we're going to do the scar marks on our chest. Like I said again, you kind of want to look like you've been attacked by a werewolf or some sort of dog-like or cat-like giant lion creature. These are going to make it look like it's a flesh wound that's being opened up across your chest like it's your real skin. 
They kind of look like gash marks slash very rough gills in a creepy mermaid. Wouldn't that be cool? Now that those gill-like scar claw marks are done, we're gonna do flexible sealer on your chest. You want to make sure you don't flex too much or move your boobies around everywhere. I hope you don't anyways, because you don't want to ruin this and it will crack. Then I'm gonna get my alcohol palette. If you do not have this, I would definitely use an aqua paint or even better, some light creams in a red tone. I'm using an orange stippling sponge because this alcohol palette is very, very harsh for your skin and you don't wanna get it in your eye. You're gonna dab that around the scar marks to make irritation. Like if the claws gash in your skin, your skin around the actual cut openings would have irritation marks. That will look kind of like a rash of an allergic reaction, but it's really just this paint. I'm starting off only with my forehead first while the rest of it dries on my chest. Getting my Makeup Forever palette and mixing an orange shade. You want this orange to be a little bit more yellow tone, kind of like, of course, a tiger, but also kind of like orange soda color. Doing parts in between the scratch marks. Then getting the white in the Makeup Forever palette and doing it in certain parts. You definitely want some on your forehead, but mostly around your eye because tigers have white around the rim of their black eye. Getting more black and doing that black liner around the eye like we were talking about. Then I'm getting a pink tone and doing the nose of the cat and more of that white Makeup Forever cream color. Whatever Halloween makeup you have on hand is fine. And doing more feline features around the mouth. You want it to fade out a little bit towards the human parts of the skin and more of a opaque white around the nose, more of the cat part. Then we're gonna get some black eyeliner, the same one I used on my eyes, to draw in the rest of that nose and the feline line mouth and more of these little dot marks that are like whisker marks. And you could definitely use some black lipstick, but I'm just using the rest of this eyeliner around my mouth to do the feline part of it, doing some more dashed lines to make it look like little fur hairs. And around the orange and white parts of the slash marks inside of there. And now for the slash marks around that forehead of the tiger, I'm gonna get some fake clotted blood. I got this one from iMats. The brand is so amazing. Just using a end of my brush because I couldn't find Q-tips even though they were right in front of my face and I couldn't see them. You could use anything that isn't your mama's or won't get you in trouble. But you want to put this on the rim of the slash marks. Don't cover the orange and white, just the rim of them to make it outline more and look more realistic. Like they're bleeding and they're just freshly cut and slashed across your face and near your eyeball. I'm going to put this around that mouth part of the cat to make it look more like an open cut sore to reveal the cat's mouth. Doing more gushy globs of the fake blood towards the bottom of that opening cut, towards the bottom near my chin. It's kind of like a teardrop shape if like the cat just took a whole chunk of my skin away near my mouth instead of just claw marks. Like he was really angry at Jasmine's beautiful lips. And now that you're done with the face portion claw marks, it's time to move to the chest. Get that orange sponge with the alcohol red blood color paint and do more irritation marks because hopefully that is dry by now. It should be. If not, get a hair dryer. Getting a paintbrush with the same color and doing more scratches on my shoulder and neck. The neck one's good. It always looks good around the neck. I don't know why. Claw marks, it's like my favorite. Hi, I'm Kat and I specialize and love doing claw marks with fake blood. Sounds perfect. My future job. So get that clotted blood again and do all inside of those claw marks. Don't show any more tiger. I think we have enough on the face. You can if you want, but I'm just going to do some thick globs of this clotted fake blood. You want to smear it and color all the inside and then do more chunks towards the edges like we did with the face. Try to make it look as realistic as you can. Again, so sorry if children aren't watching this. Now it's time to accessorize with the Jasmine wig again. It's like my favorite thing, except it gets very ratty sometimes, but it's ratty in a good way in this look. Go get your earrings on. That's the first thing you take off when you get in a fight. You could put some blood on maybe some things, but then I'm gonna add one more addition than I did before, which is a contact, a special effects contact. Thank you so much to pinkyparadise.com for sending me this yellow contact that reminds me of the tiger from the movie Aladdin. I thought it was perfect addition just for that cat side of the eye. These ones are very, very hard to apply than most. This one isn't my favorite style of the contact, but it just worked so well in this. 
But that is our completed makeup transformation of Jasmine if she was taken over by her pet tiger. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it's super duper scary. I am so sorry for younger audiences, but I just really wanted to take the Disney to another level. You know me, I love doing cute and then creepy. And random shout out, thank you for everyone who voted for me and got me on the top 10 YouTube special effect makeup channels ever on YouTube on WatchMojo.com. I'll put the links down below to that video. It was insane. I was like, are you serious? I was so honored. All the greatest artists. I was next to them on that list. I'm like, really? Is this happening? <sighs> so crazy. But now it's time to take this makeup off. This took me six hours to make, I kid you not. It was so worth it. Most intense makeup application I have ever done, just time-wise. It took me an entire day just to set up and make all the costumes. I'll put the links down below to everything I used in this video, down to where I got the stuff to make the crown and the earrings and everything. Use some makeup remover wipes. I used the apricot ones that I got from iMats. Taking this off was very, very difficult. I had to use isopropyl mirror state. That's why I said that you guys should probably not do the spirit gum with the nose and scar wax because it is very, very difficult. And this is more for a professional use. This chemical, it's not that harsh. It just takes everything off. It's oily and gross, honestly. But it was so, so worth it. Whenever you have to use this, that just means you did probably a really, really good job. You want to do this if you did the nose and scar wax with the spirit gum because you don't want to rip your eyebrow hairs out or your skin up and this helps it so much better. They have this in a liquid form and a gel with some cotton pads. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave me a comment if you like any more gory makeups or any ideas for that. Thank you guys so much for watching and again for getting me on that list of the top 10 makeup artists on YouTube. Like, are you serious? I have so many more great videos to come. I definitely had to answer the door with fake blood all over my hands, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Sorry if I scared you and gave you nightmares, but I love you all. I hope you know that, and I will see you soon in another video. Bye!